Tesla has been the king of electric vehicles by offering some unique benefits that made them stand out, but now there are many other EV options with similar features, and Tesla's supercharger network, for example, is no longer a unique advantage. However, the one advantage that Tesla still seems to have over everyone else is their full self-driving software. According to Elon Musk, next month's RoboTaxi event will be the most significant moment for Tesla since the Model 3 unveiling, and we all know how important that was because that was the turning point where Tesla went from an automotive underdog to now having the world's best-selling car. Back then, Tesla claimed that the original Model 3 came with the necessary hardware to support full autonomous self-driving and would eventually have the ability to become a driverless ride-sharing robo-taxi and go out by itself to earn money for the owner, essentially increasing the car's value. It turned out that original hardware 2.5 needed to be upgraded to hardware 3, and now Tesla is selling vehicles with an even newer hardware 4. Tesla also just made a subtle yet potentially significant change to the name of its self-driving software from full self-driving capability to full self-driving supervised. They also removed Elon's master plans from their blog, which referenced fully autonomous Tesla vehicles. And this has concerned many Tesla customers who purchased FSD in the past because the name just didn't change on the order page for current buyers. The name has retroactively changed for anyone who bought it in the past. And you can see on my Tesla app, it now says supervised next to it. Now this has left Tesla owners, even with the latest hardware 4, questioning if their vehicles will ever have the ability to be fully autonomous. A Tesla also updated its language regarding FSD's development and regulatory approval, no longer making assurances about exceeding human driver reliability or over-the-air updates. Now, although Tesla has been constantly working on FSD software, and as an FSD owner, it has definitely improved since I bought it about six years ago, there is speculation that Tesla may offer a new unsupervised FSD package for robo-taxi use. Now, the recently leaked photo of the upcoming Tesla RoboTaxi doesn't show a ton of details because it's hidden by a covering and possibly has fake alterations to the design to hide the exact styling, but it does look to be a two-seater and similar to the concepts shown in Elon Musk's biography. Now, Tesla also has filed a series of patents for wireless vehicle charging, which of course would be the most beneficial to a driverless RoboTaxi in order to avoid a human having to manually plug in and unplug a charging cable. Personally, I am rooting for the robot arm instead of wireless charging. But the bigger question is, since we are less than a month away from experiencing this revolutionary robo-taxi, how close are we to actual full self-driving ride-sharing, and how do normal people feel about the idea of a Tesla picking them up and driving them around? So I took my full self-driving supervised Model 3 out and gave Uber rides to get real people's reactions of the car driving itself. And one of the riders was actually an attorney and had some interesting things to say. But before we get into that, let's talk about something important. Since self-driving Teslas have cameras all around the car, including the inside, a big concern is privacy. But it's not just Tesla. A recent study from Mozilla claimed that cars are the worst product category they've ever reviewed for privacy, and 84% of the research brands share personal data with data brokers. Now, this is why I use today's sponsor, Delete Me, which is a hands-free service that removes personal information that's being sold online. Data brokers work around the clock to crawl the web and collect huge amounts of personal information, such as social security numbers, birthdays, addresses, and more. But luckily, Delete Me makes it quick and easy and safe to get rid of your personal data online by removing your private information from hundreds of data brokers. After signing up, just submit your personal information for removal from search engines and data broker sites. Then the Delete Me experts find and remove all of this data on your behalf. Then after seven days, you receive a detailed report and Delete Me continues to remove your personal information on a regular basis. After using Delete Me for the past year, it has removed thousands of listings and saved me over 60 hours. Try it yourself and get 20% off any Delete Me US consumer plan by scanning this QR code or visit joindeleteme.com Andy and use promo code Andy at checkout. Hi, I do YouTube videos for Tesla and I'm showcasing the latest self-driving software. Do you guys mind to be in a video? We'll just see if it can drive it to wherever we're going. Okay. Okay, here we go. I will take over if needed. But for the most part, this thing will drive itself. And I wanna see if it'll go all the way there without me having to take over. <laughs> 
the latest software just came out recently where you no longer have to put your hands on the wheel. Oh. So that's the, a big change. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, there's a tree branch right there. Oh. It didn't really see it because it was in the shade. Now we got some. Tr tr yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Give it some room. Okay. Oh, it did that by itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's doing. It's doing everything by itself. I'm not doing anything. I don't, I'm not pressing the accelerator or doing any turn signals or it's doing all that. It's based on, you know, you put any navigation to, into the display and it will drive there. So you guys feel comfortable and like, does it feel weird having the car drive itself? Um, it's different, like having it drive itself, but it's doing a good job so far. And I like that all the like cars keep showing up so you can see. Right. Yeah. Like what's happening and like this stop sign showed up. Yeah, that's really cool. And it shows the yellow lines and like, that's what the camera, so this car has cameras all the way around. This is an interesting scenario because this is a, we have a stop sign, but this cross traffic does not have a stop sign. So we'll see how this takes it. And don't worry, I'm not gonna let us get hit or anything. It does a pretty good job. So it sees the, so now it knows to go. Oh, wow. And it's pretty confident. Yeah, it uses the cameras all around the cars. So that's what it's seeing. Uh, I think it's kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind because of it's different, um, but I'm also an attorney, so going from like that kind of standpoint, if there's a malfunction in this, what do you think about like the legality of like, what if this were to like crash? Is it it's ultimately up to the driver, right? Or does Tesla have any liability? Um, I mean, I can't say for sure, but <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's a scenario where there can be an argument that it's Tesla's problem because the person relied on the car to get them there. Tesla's going to argue that they should have been paying attention as well. I think to one of the preventatives of that was to have the touch steering wheel. We had to touch it every once in a while. Tesla just changed their wording on it. It used to, call, it used to be called full self-driving capability. Now it's called full self-driving supervised with in, in parentheses. A lot of people are saying the legal team were like, oh, had to crack down on that. That's going to be interesting going forward to see how that, they handle that. And uh, right now it uses the interior. There's an interior camera and it monitors my face and it, it tracks my eyes. So if I look away from the road, if I looked down the screen for too long, you may have seen it a few minutes ago. It said, pay attention to the road. It gives me a little warning and it'll start blinking, blinking, blinking. And if it doesn't see me paying attention to the road, it'll just stop and I'll have to take off manually. Okay. So that's another, that's good. If I'm wearing sunglasses, you should see a message on the screen here and it'll say uh, sunglasses detected right there. So that means I have to put my hand on the wheel now. And, it, and it'll recognize my hand on the wheel. And if I take my hand off the wheel for a certain amount of time, it'll blink saying, pay attention, pay okay. attention. So it has a couple of ways. This is the steering wheel, and then also it monitors with the camera. They've, so, they've thought about the legality of it. And, and it's interesting because this car is six, six and a half years old, so they've put all this stuff in this car back then, knowing that you know this was all going to happen. So um, next month is their big event. They're releasing this robo taxi where it's like completely no steering wheel built for autonomous ride sharing basically would you guys trust that like with no human just coming to pick you up like given your experience so far i know it's only been like five minutes but uh i'm not sure <laughs> yeah i'm not sure either yeah like it's good so far um i don't know like i feel like maybe if you had the potential to sit in the driver's seat just so you like you could take over if you wanted to versus like being fully dependent okay. on it i don't know or maybe like an emergency break or something on the other side like i just yeah. being fully dependent on technology is a little a little it's sketch a, yeah, yeah yeah is this a turn only lane yeah okay so look it's it's supposed to go straight and now it's in the now it wants to go over in the, the, the lane here so we'll see how but it, 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 it was in the wrong lane, so um, you know what? I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna take over, and I'm gonna pass this car. Like again, I was just bragging on it, and then it just gets. So it, you have those weird scenarios where it'll like stay in the wrong lane, or the lane uh, recently turned into a turn only, and it doesn't know that yet. It reads the sign on the road, but at that point, it was too late. I feel like. Do you think it just would have sat there until we would have had enough time it, to so, yeah, merge it, over? Exactly, yeah. If I hadn't have taken over, it would have just sat there until somebody would have let, let me into that lane. And you, you already heard the honk yeah. behind me, so, yeah. I, was, so I, wasn't, I was not going to let it do that. But if I would have let it, it would have gone back into the correct lane. It just, 
your time is valuable. I'm not going to sit there and wait for it. Have you taken this on the interstate very much? So that's where Shine, when I first got the car, it was mainly built, when I first got the car, it was called Enhanced Autopilot, and that was mainly built for, for interstate, and it, it was flawless. So city streets is where it still struggles the most, uh, especially like very congested areas. And you feel pretty safe with it going fast on the interstate? I, I, as soon as I get on the interstate, I'll turn it on and it's just, it, uh, I completely trust it, which is kind of counterintuitive because you think like interstate speeds are going faster. So it's almost like you think it'd be scarier, but like I, I'm really confident. I have no issues and I haven't had any issues with it on the interstate. It's, it's this, it's this where that I have to pay attention the most. Does it do a good job of like going with traffic speeds or does yeah. it stick more to like speed it, limit? It does. So let's see. Oh, so it stopped and. Let so it's over. a nice car. That's so sweet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let them over. Their machine learning is built like they, 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 they gather tons and tons of data from everybody that drives their Teslas and they learn about how pe humans actually drive. So that's the really cool part about it. But um, So there it knew to get over. It did know to get over there. Yeah. 99% of the time it, it will work just great. It'll get you where it needs to go. Uh, and it's just those little times where... I'm, I'm curious to see where it will stop here. All right, it's got the turn signal on. All right, that was perfect. Thank you so much. You <laughs> Thank you so much. For, is it okay if I uh, feature you guys in the YouTube video? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, awesome. Well, you're an attorney, so you don't have to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, was that a successful trip according to you in your own opinion? I thought it did pretty well. I have definitely been enjoying FSD lately after the 12.5 update. And I'm curious to see how it's going to handle more updates in the future, especially with my car with hardware three. Let me know your thoughts on FSD and the upcoming Robo Taxi unveiling event. I will be covering that as that happens. So make sure you subscribe to see that in the future. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.